Hi, folks. This is uh, New System. I'm a chemistry specialist at uh, Vernier. And um, Elaine and I are going to talk about uh, intermolecular forces uh, today. It's a very popular topic in, in uh, both regular chemistry and AP chemistry. Um, I have um, worked at Vernier now for almost five years. Uh, I've uh, been, I taught chemistry at Maryland for 34 years. I use Vernier equipment for over 30 years. I've known David Vernier since the early 80s. Um, and I'm enjoying doing workshops with Vernier and uh, did a lot of teacher training over the course of my career, even while I was teaching. Um, and uh, so this, this being in the time that we're in right now, we're trying to find ways to help folks. And I'm hoping that you find uh, today's session valuable. Um, Elaine, did you want to say anything? Uh, just welcome to everyone who's at the webinar. And um, yep, we have questions as news goes along. Please drop them into the Q&A. I will uh, do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. And if it's something that would be beneficial to the broader audience, I'll definitely um, ping news and I'll have him uh, answer the question live. So we can um, also do that option. OK, and Elaine is my boss, so I'm going to try to behave myself here today. Um, so. Uh, yeah, the, the, these are the things that uh, that she just mentioned. If you have any questions, please please ping us, and we'll do our best to answer them as fast as we can. Um, but let's go ahead and and start start playing. Um, I, while I while I've worked with Vernier, I've um, one of the things I love to do is do workshops with teachers. I love to share ideas with teachers, and so our session today is is goal, is work planned around the idea of sharing things with you and hopefully things that you might find valuable. Um, and so there was a couple of things I wanted to make sure people were aware of. Uh, for example, we have a bunch of remote solutions that uh, we published on our website and you may find those useful. Um, if you go to vernier.com, you can actually access a bunch of them for free. Um, so it, it's uh, on our main website, there's a thing that says remote solutions and you can take a look at there's a little webinar that was recorded some some months ago the one that's for free that has a ton of information that, that you might find useful is this library down here um, that library is going to be available until the middle of next year and you can go in here and download not just chemistry you can see biology physics and so forth but you'll you can see that there's a bunch of, of activities these are data sets and they're also um instructions. So for example, the evaporation of alcohols activity from the chemistry with Vernier book is right here. You can download that and you can also download the, the instructions in the form of a Word document, uh, which you could of course open open with sheets if you wanted to do that. Or not sheets, pardon me, uh, Google Docs. Um, so that that is going to be available for a, for a long time and, you're, and I encourage you to look there if you haven't already um, for uh, resources that you might find um, helpful during this time. There's lots and lots of lots of activities taken from all of our chemistry um, lab manuals. Um, let me go back to my notes here. I you know, had to had to do my lesson plan. Um, and so the other thing is uh, lots of people use different software from us. Today, we are going to be looking at graphical analysis and spectral analysis. And today, you'll get a free copy of, of Graphical Analysis Pro. Now, caveat, it's uh, got a two week limit um, that the free will run out, but you can get a 30 day free preview if you want to. So if you go to our website, you can you can set up a, a 30 day free. it's fully functional. You can use it with your kids. The stuff that we're going to do today, you might you might be able to do something like that with your students. So so just be aware of that. Um, but uh, one of the things that I love to do is I love to do a workshop where teachers get stuff. You know, teachers are teachers. I was one forever for over three decades, and it's really nice to be able to um, to come away from a workshop with things that are that I could use in my classroom. So if you haven't already done it, go to vernier.com and download graphical analysis on your device. Uh, you're more than welcome to watch. If you, if you just wanna watch this webinar, by all means watch. Uh, if, if you wanna participate, um, you're gonna need graphical analysis and later on, you're also going to need spectral analysis. So they're free. You can go to our website and download them for free. 
Um, and uh, if you're on, if you want to run this thing on your iPad or your phone, you're welcome to do it. You just need to go to the app store and get it from there. Uh, but uh, if you haven't done that already, please make sure that you do that uh, because it would be really fun for you to be able to participate. And um, if you've already got graphical analysis on your device, go ahead and start it up. And uh, you should get a screen that looks very similar to mine. Okay. Um, if you haven't already done pro, what happens is if you this latest version of graphical analysis, you'll see this little shield up here. Okay. And what I'd like you to do is if is is tap on that shield and a little box opens up and you need a special code to turn graphical analysis into graphical analysis pro so so little power tip here folks. Everybody has Graphical Analysis Pro, they just don't know it because they don't have the key. And so I'm going to give you the key. And that's this little number right here. I'm going to put it in the chat and make sure that I've got the chat set right. Here you go. And so what you need to do is type that key or paste that key into this box right here. Okay, so tap on the shield and then paste or type that key into that box. Let me zoom this up here a little bit. Graphical analysis, if you weren't aware of it, has this really nice little feature where you can kind of, for presentations, you can make it look bigger by tapping here and picking presentation. It's a very, very nice. So that feature is not a pro feature. That's a normal feature. Everybody has that. So type that key that's in the, that's in the chat into the box that opens up when you tap on the shield. If you're getting, if you're stuck, don't hesitate to let Elaine know, and she'll she'll walk you through it. And then tap on submit, and what happens is your free version of graphical analysis just became a pro version. Now, as the little notice down here says, this is only going to be good for a couple of weeks, uh, but you can get a 30-day free trial, which will be fully functional, and you can use it with your students and do everything that we're going to do in the workshop. What's what is Graphical Analysis Pro, what does it have? Well, tap on the little uh, file icon up here in the corner. This is the file menu and start a new experiment. And over here on the side, there's a new box that you might not have, you, you didn't see before if you didn't have Pro, tap on that. And what you have now, this is very reminiscent of um, Logger Pro for those of you that are Logger Pro users from the past. I just clicked on filter and I switched it to chemistry so we can look at what's available for chemistry. And if you, if you look down this list, a number of experiments are now included in graphical analysis, kind of like Logger Pro, including the one we're going to do today, right? So if you scan down here, there's experiments from advanced chemistry, and there's experiments from chemistry with Vernier, and eventually the, there may be some others. But the one we're going to look at today is called evaporation and inter intermolecular forces. So go ahead, and if you're, if you're at this point, go ahead and um, open that. You may have to download it. It should only take a few seconds to download it. And what's going on? Well, two things. There is a sample data set in there, and there is a video. And so if you uh, tap the play button, you can just watch the video. But what's even more exciting is if you tap on this little curly cue up here, this replay button, you can actually watch the video synchronized to the data. So this this video here this is our my my colleague melissa taking some data in in the lab and these sensors were synchronized to graphical analysis so you, this data you see being collected here is happening at the same time as the so one of the one of the concerns that teachers have been have been sharing with us is if you if we share a set of data with the students they really don't understand what it what it was what you know how where did that data come from um and so now with graphical analysis pro we are providing a number of videos linked to some popular experiments um, they're built in you can also put in your own so if you have your own experiment and you would like to link the data to a video, you can have it all in one place rather than have it separate. I know many of us, including me, have been shooting video separately, and you obviously could still do that. But with Graphical Analysis Pro, 
you can match them, you can have them together. So this is that, that experiment. And in fact, I put the instructions for this experiment in the folder that you guys are all, all, all linked to. So in, the, in your email, you should have gotten a link to this folder that has all these freebies, right? Getting back to, <laughs> Teachers really like to have stuff to use in their classroom with their students. And so uh, you should have got a link to this folder. And that experiment that, we're, that we were just looking at is in here. It's this one right here, experiment number nine, evaporation of alcohols. I'm gonna, rather than opening it from Google, I'm gonna open it from, uh, from my desktop just so that we can see it. But here's that experiment, okay? And with all the instructions, okay? And you're welcome to use that with your students. Okay. If you own our lab manuals, there, these instructions are in for graphical analysis. If you own our lab manuals, you also have the instructions for LabQuest. You have them for Logger Pro. I believe there might even be some instructions for a calculator from way back in the past. Um, this part I wanted to highlight a little bit, and that's the pre-lab. Okay. You're doing this from home. I would have, I had my students would, they would go and they would look up the model, the, if, if you're not familiar with this experiment, you do the, well, we used to do the first four uh, alcohols. So we used to do methanol, ethanol, pro, uh, normal propanol, nor, normal butanol. Uh, some school systems uh, have gotten, have gotten very, have gotten picky for good reason uh, for methanol. So we're trying, we're getting it rid of it from our procedure. And you'll, if you notice when Melissa ran that in graphical analysis, she was running um, um, ethanol and uh, propanol. So uh, in that, and just because we're trying to be a little more cognizant of the issues with, with potential safety features of methanol. Um, and so what the students would do though in the experiment is they would work out the molecular formula and they would work out the uh, the uh, mass. And then the other thing you did is you would do pentane and you do hexane. And those, if you're familiar with the organic chemistry there, a little chance to teach a little of that, uh, those, those alkanes don't have the, the hydroxyl group on them. So that's the difference. But if you look at the molecular mass of, of um, uh, normal butane and probably butane and normal butanol, um, they're pretty close. And uh, one of the things we used to teach was we teach is that the intermolecular forces are related to the size of the molecule, whether there's oxygen and nitrogen and fluorine in the molecule. One thing that, you know, if you're working from home, I, I, I am, will admit that I'm a little bit uh, behind the times here. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Moleview. Um, if you haven't been using it, you might want to look at it. Uh, it's free, runs on anything, and you can build your own molecules, right? So you can you can have it. Uh, you can build your own, or you can you can. There's a library, so you can call up molecules, and th these are all editable. But and then over here, kids can rotate them, right? So when you're when you're talking about intermolecular forces, I, this is really neat, and it's free. Um, so you may want to take a look at that. I put the link to it in the, uh, my notes, um, let me go back to my notes here. Um, it's just moleview.org and it's uh, open source free stuff, but it's really nice for building molecules. And what I used to do is, you know, in class, I would bring out the model kits and have some kids build models and then hold them next to each other. So we could look at the intermolecular, you know, attractions between the molecules and, you know, compare them, line them up and so forth. And so you can do, you can, there's a built-in library. You can build your own stuff, you know. So here's here's propanol, you know, and they can they can rotate that. Um, you can also we're going to do a demo here in just a sec. We can look at isopropanol, you know, and compare those. So very nice tool um, that your students may find useful, or maybe while you're teaching. So let's teach something. Little little uh, role model action here. Okay, what else can you do? with Graphical Analysis Pro. With, this is kind of a cool thing. What I'm gonna do, take a look at my screen, is I am going to, and I've got a camera set up over here because I'm actually gonna do an experiment right now. So this is my, you, you are in my dining room, by the way. I, sorry, it's a little messy in here. Um, and I've got two bottles. I've got a bottle of normal propanol and I've got a bottle of 99%, right? isopropanol, not the stuff from the grocery store, right? And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect uh, this temperature probe right here. 
me, this temperature probe. I'm going to connect that to graphical analysis. So I'm going to start a new experiment. And don't worry, you're going to get to play here in just a bit. OK, so I'm going to do a sensor data collection here. And I'm going to turn on this, this sensor. If you're not familiar with our GoDirect sensors, this is a wireless sensor. And the red light indicates that it's, it's sending out a Bluetooth signal. And so I'm going to go into graphical analysis, and I'm going to connect it. Every Bluetooth sensor from Vernier has a unique code. This one ends in G5. You'll see temp. So I'm going to connect that sensor. So I now have the sensor connected to, so here the, you'll notice the light now is green. So I have the sensor connected. I'm going to make this screen a little smaller for the moment. And what I'm going to do is the experiment, if you read the experiment instructions, it says to run the experiment for four minutes, 240 seconds. So what I'm going to do is go down here and I'm going to change the, the uh, length of the experiment from 180 to 240 seconds. That's going to give us some time to try something fun here in just a second together. I mean, also um, in the later versions of graphical analysis, you can have like a, a nice large meter if you want, kind of reminiscent of Logger Pro. It's the same meter that's at the bottom, but it's kind of pretty. I'm going to put that up just so we can all see it. I'm going to take this bottle of normal propanol and open it up and put this temperature probe in it. Give it a chance to equilibrate. Take a look at the temperature. You, you can see the meter here. It looks like it's not going too crazy. So I'm going to start collecting data. And the way this experiment goes, if you're not familiar with it, you let it go for 10 seconds or so just to get a nice baseline set of data. So I've got that. And so then I'm going to take the probe out of the bottle and just hang it over. If you're in your classroom, we, we recommend that you hang it over like a sink or don't let your students stand too close to it because the probe will actually pick up some of the radiant heat from the body. Um, now, here's the fun part. Do you see this little, this little thing looks kind of like a, a little antenna thing, right? Data sharing, it says when I hover over it. What I need you to do is on your copy of graphical analysis, I need you to start a new file, new experiment. So up here in the top left corner, click on the little file doodad there and do new experiment. And when you do that, don't share that one we were fiddling with a minute ago. And then you'll see this green window pop up, tap on data sharing, okay? And what we're gonna do right now is we are, we are going to share the data that I just, I am collecting right now. I'm gonna share that with you. So this code you see on the screen right now, type that in when you tap on data sharing, type that FAO2TE code, type that in to, to where it asks for that code in data sharing, okay? And then, Go for it and see what happens, okay? So type that code in. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it into the chat so that if anybody comes late or something, then they can do it too. So there's that code. This is the, this is the uh, uh, data sharing code. And anybody getting any data on their end? Let us know in the chat or, the, or something. Are you getting the data? Yes, no? So if you're familiar with Vernier products, isn't that great? Okay, the um, data sharing used to be a local thing. You could, you, we've had data sharing on, on LabQuests for years, but now you have data sharing through the internet. So what you can do is you can take any of our sensors. You're not, it doesn't have to be a Bluetooth sensor. If you've got one of, if you already own our sensors, you can do what I'm doing, just plug it all in. Um, and you can do an experiment with your students. Now it has to use graphical analysis, sorry folks. Not not ready yet for um, for spectral analysis, but we're you know the chem group is pushing the software guys, but you can uh, do this with graphical analysis and and any of our sensors that will work with graphical analysis. So with your students, you could remotely collect data. What you guys are getting is your own data. Like you may notice this meter doesn't show. If you want that meter to show, go up here to this box and turn it on. Okay, and then you'll see that meter. If you like to have a data table, 
turn it on. You're right. You can go over here and turn it on, but you guys are in, in control of that. I'm not in control of that. Okay. You are. So all you're going to get from me is you're going to get this data, data stream. That's all you're going to get. Okay. Um, News? Yes. There's a great question that I think would benefit the audience. Uh, someone is asking if students need to purchase graphical analysis pro. Absolutely not. This is Vernier land here, folks. Uh, you purchase a site license. Now, now, the way Graphical Analysis works, Graphical Analysis Pro, is it's a yearly subscription, but it's pretty reasonable. Right now, I think it's 69 bucks to, for the rest of this year. Um, and then it's a site license. So what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to share that, you know, that code that I gave you all to make it pro. You're going to get a code like that when you buy Graphical Analysis, and you'll share that with your students. And so your students will then get pro from you for nothing. Okay. And it runs on anything. So if you guys have an iPhone and you want to try this on an iPhone, it works great. Okay. Um, but no, you do, they do not need to buy it. Your, your school buys it by paying for the subscription. There is no per seat charge. It's a single subscription charge, every teacher in your school. So even if you're, you buy it for chemistry and your physics guy goes, Hey, that's pretty cool. I'd like to do that. Perfectly fine. You do not need to buy another license, just one license. Good question, but yeah, Vernier Land, we're, we, we uh, like to, to do stuff like that and make it available. All right, we just did normal propanol. You should have the state on your screen. You know, I hope you do anyway. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like, let me bring the camera back up. I'd like to do isopropyl alcohol. I, you know, do another run, okay? But before we do that, I'd like the students to predict, like you might take mole view, right? And go in there and say, okay, this is normal propanol. That's what it looks like. This is isopropyl alcohol. Look, that OH group is in the middle. Does that mean that there's more intermolecular attraction or less intermolecular attraction when that OH group? So I want you to make a prediction on your copy of graphical analysis, and you can do this too, Tap on the little graph tools doodad right down there and pick add a prediction. Okay, so if you think that the well, it, I'm going to leave this to you to just dis, to decide how to share this with your students. But if you think the temperature change will be greater, then show that on your graph. Now, you might I, I'm purposely not giving away, you know, is this more intermolecular attraction or less? I mean, it's less. And so, you know, but, but the point is you may want your students to discover that for themselves. You didn't like that. Maybe you want to change your mind, put it somewhere else. When you have your prediction, the way you want it, tap on save. Okay. Tap on save. All right. And there is my graph and there is my prediction. Now in the lab, there's a couple of ways you can do this experiment. You can do it with two temperature probes. Some teacher, some schools have two, some schools don't. I never did it with two. I always did it with one temperature probe. Uh, the issue right now, because we kind of time is a bit of a premium, is this temperature probe is pretty cold. And I'd have to warm it back up and, and change the change the wick. And you know, in my classroom, that's not a big deal. But what I'm gonna do is I have a second temperature probe you know, which might be a little bit of a luxury that maybe you don't have, but for the purpose of the workshop, what I'm gonna do is use the second one. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna disconnect the first one. So I'm gonna go down this little doodad at the bottom here that's called sensor setup. I'm gonna go in there and I'm just gonna disconnect this first sensor and I'm gonna connect the second one. So let me show that to you just in case you missed it the last time. I push the little power button and the red light flashes. This one has its identifier ends in K4. So I'll go over here and type K4. There it is. And I'll connect it. And that's it. I'm ready to go. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is do the experiment the same way. Let me kind of adjust my screens here a little so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to get my isopropanol here. Put the temperature probe in it. Okay. And start collecting data. And I'm gonna cross my finger that, you know, you can see 21.6, that, that's pretty close, I think, to what the other one was, let's find out. So you guys should be getting this too. Now, 
good question might be, well, can I see the other one? Sure. Tap on the y-axis label and turn on data set number one. Okay, and let's take a look and see how they compare. So you can see they were pretty close to the same temperature. And that was my goal was that I wanted the, the uh, temperature probes to start out at the same temperature. It, I mean, it's delta T, so, you know, and the delta T's will be enough different that usually that's not a big issue. But I think it's a little more impressive when it starts out pretty close. Uh, author of the, lab, of the lab manual made a good point. He said, what you could do is you could take a moist uh, towel, like a moist dish, dish towel, and get it to you know, room temperature or slightly more, and then put the probes in there to get the temperature back to the, to the same. Oh, look, my, my prediction, well, yeah little steeper, but but you get the point, right? So you've got isoprene, so you've got this this hydroxyl group in the middle. And what you know our our hope here is students are going to look at this and go, oh, it's evaporating more easily because you know it's you put you go to the doctor's office, they put that on you in the doctor's office and it feels cold. And um, so the stuff is evaporating more easily. So you look at the molecule and you go, hmm, this one mustn't have as much intermolecular attraction as when it's on the end. Well, then the van der Waals forces become a factor, right? You've got this long string of carbons and you don't have that long string in, in isopropanol. So building the models really helps. And then of course you've got, you're gonna do, uh, if you do this experiment the way we wrote it, you're also gonna do, um, uh, normal butanol, but nothing keeps you from doing terse butyl alcohol, right? You could do the same thing. I mean, terse butyl alcohol, you know, you've got that OH group on the second carbon. Um, and that one's a really cool one because, you know, that if you're not familiar with that alcohol, it's it's relatively safe. Um, they're all flammable, of course, but, but that one has a melting point of like five degrees Celsius. So it's kind of neat. You can make ice cubes out of it and do stuff like that. So, so anyway, you should be getting this data. Now, I did collect this data a few days ago, I think, and I put it in the folder. So there is a folder of the, there is a copy of the data right there. Okay. So all of you get this data um, from there. You are getting it here too. Okay. As a matter of fact, and I'll go ahead and I'm going to move ahead here, but I'm not going to stop this. I'll let it stop on its own and then you'll get a copy of it. The idea here is that when the students get this on their on their device it's theirs and at that point they can do whatever you want them to do so they can analyze the data they can make a report from the data you might ask well how can you make a report let me let this go because we're you know frankly it's only got a few seconds left and i'll show you let me show you the template while this is finishing i gave you a copy so i taught the last three years I taught uh, forensic science and I'm working on some, some chemistry forensic science activities. If you've been to any of my workshops in the last couple of years, the actual physical workshops, I have run some forensic science workshops. And um, the, uh, what we did was that class was all electronic. They were trying, you know, they're trying that back in 2014 or something when I started doing that. Um, and so one of the things I did was I created templates as dependent on the level of the student. You guys all have this, by the way, it's in the folder, it's lab write up template, nothing fancy. It's a, it's a, a Google Sheets document. What I found with forensic science is the, the kids would frequently be required to make a presentation. And so this was a really easy way to do that. With graphical analysis, it's really easy to take a copy of a graph and make it into an electronic file that you can then do anything you want with. You can put it in, in anything. Um, and so let's take a look. Is that thing done collecting data? Yeah, it's done. So, you know, what you might do is you might have the students annotate their graph, right? They could go in here and write, you know, N propanol or something like that. Um, and then tell, you know, mark, mark the graph, you know, that kind of thing. You, you can have them do, uh, you know, like, you may not want the prediction on there. They could turn that off, you know, and then they can do statistics. I mean, there's just a lot of cool stuff that you can do with uh, graphical analysis. So, so, you know, all kinds of things like that, you know, the statistics, the change in value, you know, whatever. But once you've got it the way you like it, you know, personally, I would like a title on my graph. Most, most of my students would get, lose a point if they didn't put a title on there. So comparing, you know, n-propyl alcohol, 
and ISO broke. Okay, so you know a lot, a lot of things you would expect them to do, maybe. But then what they can do is they can take that. By the way, if you need to save this, save it. Okay, but what they can do is they can export it. So they can take that graph image, export that. It's just a standard PNG file. They could, if they're on a device, they can put it on a Google Drive. If they've got a, if they've got a a Chromebook. Um, you, you need you need definitely need to do some exploring if you're on an iPad or on an iPhone because Apple does its fun stuff with its file formats, but you, you might need to explore that, you know, so you can give it a name if you need to um, uh, alcohol graph, let's say. And so then put that somewhere handy. I'm putting it on my desktop. And then if you're doing an electronic report, like I really like this for my ninth graders because they were you know, new and they, they hadn't written too many high school lab reports. So this kind of walks them through, but here data and graphs. So what the, you can do is you can take that, that uh, graph image that I just took off of graphical analysis. It's on my desktop somewhere, there it is. And you can import that and put, so that'll go in anything. It'll go in Word document or whatever, whatever you're using. But this was kind of cool. And then, you know, if you it, with my forensic science kids, you know, they could do a presentation, you know, from that. I had them take in forensic science, they would take pictures of the crime scene, you know, things like that. And they could put all that in there. So I put that in as just a thought is, you know, a way to, to use that export option. You might notice that there were some other choices there under export. Uh, this AMBL file, that, that is the old graphical analysis four file, the non-pro file. The pro can open the non-pro, the non-pro can't open the pro file, so just be aware of that. Um, CSV, common separated values, these can be opened in Excel, they can be opened in Sheets. Um, they're really easy to copy and paste. Um, by the way, graphical analysis files can be opened in Logger Pro if you're a computer person. Um, so that's also a possibility. So it's it's getting to be more and more of a of your toolbox kind of graphing program. So, um, so uh, I'm going to switch gears here to the other half of the presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions about what we just did? Uh, and make sure that you let Elaine know or let me know, and and uh, we'll answer those. Yeah, of course. You can't really talk, so the internet crickets, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to change gears on my on my uh, workspace here too. You are you get to see my lab space here. This is my dining room, actually. Um, let me pull this in. We um, in the chemistry group at Bernier, we're working on a new lab manual, and we're hoping it'll be ready by certainly by this time next year. Um, I believe it's going to be advertised in our in our. Uh, upcoming catalog. It's called food chemistry. And um, this one is a classic, for me, it was a classic experiment because I used to, I did it for 20, 30, 20 years, I would say at least. I think I learned this experiment in uh, Catholic University at an Institute for Chemical Education uh, workshop back in the 90s. Um, and what it is, is um, this is uh, grape Kool-Aid, right? So this is, uh, if you've ever done this one, by the way, if you don't have, if you want to play, um, you don't have to play right now, but if you want to play, go to our website and download uh, spectral analysis. It'll, it's under downloads. If you go to our website, look under downloads, you'll see it there. Um, you'll need that to open the, the shared files um, that I put in here for this part of the experiment. Um, so the second experiment um, in the new food chemistry book is going to be called uh, uh, "Show Your True Colors." And so uh, let me let me kind of demonstrate what's happening here. The idea, if you're not familiar with this one, is that these these common drinks they have they are they have a ton of FDNC food dyes in them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's only actually seven FDNC food dyes, it's just combinations of them that make the colors. The reason why I'm holding this one is this one has three. Uh, a teacher told, asked me this some time ago. If you look at the ingredients, there's actually three. Most of them have two, but this one, that, that crystal light actually has three. Um, this one that we're going to do right now is grape. And um, so that I, what I did is I made up a batch of, of great Kool-Aid here. That's what's in this bottle back here. Let me get the spectrum is out of the way right now because we're, we're going to need it, but we're not going to need it right this instant. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this great Kool-Aid and put it in this cup. Try not to spill it all over my dining room. Mm. 
really don't need much. I mean, the, the downside with uh, this stuff is in terms of you don't need much, would, can you make it for years and years? You used to store this stuff, store it in the refrigerator. If you store it in the stock room, it's gonna mold. I mean, even without sugar, it does, I, you don't put any sugar in it. You just make it without sugar, but um, even so. So here's what we're gonna do. And the procedure is right in the folder, okay? So you guys get this procedure. Um, this is from our, like, our new upcoming book. And um, it's, you know, so you're welcome to it. You're welcome to use it today, you know, if, if you have the materials. Um, the one thing you're gonna need that's a little bit unusual is the, um, is the, the separatory column, this little doodad right here. Uh, that's, you can get them at Flynn, you can get them um, from um, Waters. Uh, get them from Waters, they come in a 50 pack. This is 10. This is what uh, this is what they look like when you get them from Waters. There's ten of them in here. Um, they are a little cheaper. I, I put that information in the folder, by the way. Um, so if you look in the folder, let me bring it up here. Uh, it's right here. This uh, this Google Doc tells you about the CPAC. Let me find it from the right spot here. So if you're interested in doing this one, these things. I had them for 20 some years and they last, if you, if you treat them right, they last forever. Um, they are considerably cheaper from, from waters, but you have to buy 50. Um, if you buy them from Flynn, just a little caveat, the picture at Flynn shows three, but you only get one. So they're 10 bucks a piece at Flynn. Um, so just be aware of that. If you think you're getting three, I was totally surprised when I ordered it. I only got one and I had, I, I called them and I said, hey, what's going on? And they said, well, that's just not the greatest picture. So anyway, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load the, the, um, the column with grape juice. But to do that, the first thing you need to do is you need to prime the column. So I'm going to take five milliliters of isopropyl alcohol. So here's just your plain old ordinary grocery store, 70%. And I've got that in this cup way over here. So I got five milliliters. I'm using a vernier, uh, you know, it's not a vernier, it's a lure lock uh, uh, syringe. I mean, they, they, if you have our pressure sensors, you've probably got a bunch of these. And so I'm going to put five milliliters of, of um, alcohol through the, the uh, column. And you want to do it slowly. Don't, don't let the kids go too crazy with this because you can, you can push that, that uh, silica material out of there if you push it too hard. So you, know, you want a relatively slow flow through there. By the way, I made a video of all this. And my colleague, Melissa, uh, just made a you did a beautiful job of annotating it, and, and it's in the folder. So take a look at it uh, if you want later on. Um, so you don't have to. You can just watch this. You don't need to like take any notes or anything because there's a video of it. But here's now I'm flushing water. So I flushed alcohol through it just to make sure it's clean. Uh, at the end, you're going to do the same thing, and that's what I mean. If you treat these columns good they'll last forever. I mean, you know, for what we use them for, I'm not research grade or anything like that. So that column is called pre-treated now, it's ready. So I'm gonna put that over top of the first um, test tube. And I find that, that if I do it this way, it's easier to hold the uh, column by putting it in a stopper. You don't have to, but I just find it easier. So I'm gonna go, what you don't want to do is you don't want to draw backwards through the column. You can definitely damage the material in there if you do that. And so I've got Kool-Aid in my in my uh, my syringe, five milliliters, and I'm gonna connect that to the column. Let me see if I can adjust that camera ever so slightly so you guys can see this better. There we go. And I'm going to elute the, uh, the um, grape drink and then observe the column right here. You want to be watching that. If you look at the instructions, the students are supposed to look at two things. They're supposed to look at the column, and they're also supposed to look at the effluent, so the material that's coming through. So you, as it comes through, you want, to, you want to check this out, and you also want to look at the liquid. And, oh, look, we took the dye out. You know, one of the questions might be, how do you get the dyes out? And kids would say things like evaporate, you know, things like that. Uh, but here, this, this, and so now you got to start talking about things like stationary phase, mobile phase, right? And so we've got a stationary phase, we've got a mobile phase. Now, right now, that was mostly water. 
But now let's take this and move it over here and let's run straight up water through there, right? So I'm gonna run, I'm gonna come up one test tube short if I do it this way. So I'm gonna dump this out. This was just, I loaded the column and notice it's separated. So come back over here. And now this time, let's see what just plain old H2O does to, now you might, I mean, a, 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 you know, an astute student might say, well, wasn't that water that was in there to begin with? And so what you wanna do is five milliliters of solvent. And if you observe, you'll notice that there's a little motion going on in here and the liquid coming through is still still clear okay but you'll see a little motion action going on so the students are supposed to take note of that write that down and also what the effluent looks like and now this time let's get um, some alcohol and in the procedure what you do is you make a serial dilution of 70 percent so 70 percent 35 17 and a half of eight point something or other and four point something or other. So, and then what you do is you start from the low concentration and work your way up, right? So this is this is four point, what is it? Three eight uh, percent alcohol, the rest is water. And let's kind of walk that through the column. Ew. Check it out. Looks like the red's coming through, but the blue is not moving hardly at all. Now that was 4.38%. So let's bump the alcohol level up a little bit. So we have 8% now, 8.75 or something. Let's get that through there. Let's see if we can push that blue a little bit. All right, so watch the blue. Like I said, you want to go slow. Don't you know? Kids are going to want to poke that through there pretty quick. You could potentially damage the uh, silica material that's in there if you go too fast. Um, so, but now, the, the with the eight percent alcohol, it looks like the blue is moving a little bit. It's definitely not stuck at the top anymore. Let's go up here to seventeen percent. So part of this is a discussion of. What's going on, right? So, you know, there's, there's a molecular attraction between the stationary phase and some of those molecules. And there's also an attraction between the mobile phase. And of course the mobile phase varies a little bit because the concentration is, is varying. So we have, you know, more alcohol. It looks like there's a greater attraction of the blue component of the, of the drink to higher concentrations of alcohol. And let's say, I gotta remember what I did here. Zero, four, eight, 17, 35, okay. And I'm talking, it's easy for me to forget. But notice the red is pretty much gone, right? You look at that, the, the red is pretty much gone. So let's run this through there. That's the 35%. So you can also look at, you can talk about, well, what's different about the alcohol molecule compared to a water molecule? And so there's the intermolecular attractions that are going on with the, with the dyes, but also this whole idea of, you know, with chromatography, there's always a mobile phase and a stationary phase. And so you can talk about that. Uh, we do have a gas chromatograph that we sell at Vernier too, and that's kind of a cool dude. Um, so if you, if you happen to have the, the funds to maybe get a grant or something and get one of those, then you can also relate the same concepts, but in the gaseous phase instead of in the liquid phase. And so here we go. So notice that the 17% pretty much finished off the blue component. And if we notice, we're almost just washing the column here at the end. And so that's part, that's part, I actually jumped ahead a little bit here. This is part two of the experiment where you do the separation, the, the chromatography separation. Part one, was to look at the spectrum of the um, of the uh, uh, drink, and what you're going to find, and let me grab a spectroviz here so you guys can see what I'm doing here, is um, that it's 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 a little not as um, um, obvious necessarily as you might think, and let me show you what I mean. 
Okay, I'm going to connect this SpectraViz. Our new ones now can be connected by Bluetooth. So I'm going to connect it to, uh, I'm connecting it to spectral analysis. And uh, what I should have done is, is uh, run the, run the uh, calibration while I was talking, but that's okay. I, you know me, I can talk while it's running. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an absorbance spectrum. And what you need to do is you need to, to if, you, if you're familiar with spec 20s or whatever, is you need to do a, you need to zero the instrument. And so I've got, I've got a cuvette, let me get this out of the way, got a cuvette of water. In our spectrum is the light path is left to right. So you just got to be careful that you put the, put the water, the cuvette of, it, you know, it can be whatever the blank is, more often than not in aqueous solutions, of course, it's water. And so what you're going to do then is this is allowing the system to warm up. And so while the system is warming up, you know, we'll, I'll talk a little bit. So we're going to um, take some straight up um, um, grape drink. So let me get some of this grape drink here. This is the original. When you're making up the grape drink for this experiment, don't put sugar in it. Okay, just just all we need is the grape drink. Um, and so let me grab a tissue. How are we doing on the calibration? We're almost ready. So this is this is the sample of grape drink. And what we're going to do is let's take a look at the spectrum of this grape drink. I'll trust myself here. I'm going to put a cap on it. If you're not familiar with our spectrum is it comes with 15 uh, cuvettes uh, with uh, caps. Um, it can be run by Bluetooth. It can be run by uh, USB, you can plug it in. It comes with a USB cable. So you just gotta make sure that the blank, if you look at the, the screen, the blank is in there, it's aligned correctly, hit finish calibration. And this thing reads from 380 to 900. Nine, nine Elaine, you might have to correct me, it's 900, 950 nanometers. Uh, goes into the infrared pretty good. It doesn't go into the UV hardly at all. So, uh, but you know, for most of what we do for visible spectrum, it's, it's wonderful. Um, and so there it is, it's all, it's all calibrated. And so let me get that out of the way and put my grape drink in there and let's take a look at it. And it, depending on your preconceptions, this may or may not be obvious. And so we can look at this. This is just the straight up absorption spectrum of um, Kool-Aid, right? Grape Kool-Aid. And so we can actually find the, find the lambda maxes here and see, you know, there's a couple of things. And so one of the questions I think the experiment asks is how many, how many, components, dye, dye components, do you expect? You know, if they read the label, they may see it too. Looks like there's some little doodad going on over here too. Uh, but I believe that the label only shows two. Then it turns out that there's actually two reds and two blues. FDNC, if you go to uh, Flynn's website, you can, you can buy a set of FDNC dyes. And there's actually two of them. And so we can verify um, using our, our um, our uh, components that we made, we can take a cuvette and we can take out some of the blue, put that in, in another cuvette. Okay, you purists, yeah, I hear you. You know, you can use the same cuvette if you're worried about optical stuff. Uh, for most of the things with, that we're doing at high school level, it's not that big a deal, but you know, theoretically, we should be doing the same cuvette. Let me run another uh, spectrum here. That's the blue dye. And so we can look and see, hmm, interesting. There does look like maybe, I don't know if it's, uh, it, it, there might've been some red in that. Remember that, that I took that from this one here, which was, let me get the thing out of the way. I took it from this one here. I probably should have taken it from this one. So it looks like I've still got a little bit of red in there. Um, and then, you know, you could do the same thing with the red one. Now, in the uh, sample files that I gave you, so students could take this and they could identify, you know, they can do the same things. You can annotate, you know, so you can put in here a grape drink, you know, that kind of thing. So they can, they can do all the annotations and stuff, and then they can export this just like graphical analysis. It's pretty much the same choices here. But what I also put in the sample data because I just didn't want to spend the time. And as you might be able to tell, we're running short a little bit. In the sample data, I did put the um, appropriate 
uh, FDNC dies that I got from Flynn. Okay, so I bought the Flynn FDNC die kit. And so let me show you that. You have it too, by the way, if you're playing along and you, you it's in this folder and it's this one right here. Um, and so if you open that one up, now the way the we, I wrote the experiment is I wrote the experiment so teachers could use any fruit drink, they don't have to use grape. Um, and so in the experiment, it, it says the students are supplied with, um, with, with known dyes, and this is all of the ones from the Flynn kit. So there's no, blue number one, blue number two, red number three, red number 40, and yellow, and so forth. If you look at the spectrum, you can see that, and I, I forgot to take note of the one I just did a, a second ago, is there's two blues. Now it's unfortunate graph, you can't change the colors of the plots right now. Eventually you will be able to, but not right now. Um, but you can look at the two blues and say, oh, was, was it blue number one or blue number two? And from their, from their uh, spectra from the separation that they did, they can, they can specify which uh, which blue this is, right? You know, because otherwise, to the naked eye, blue is going to look blue. Uh, same with the reds. You notice that there's two different reds, red, red three and red 40. And so they can also, you know, identify uh, which one. So kind of a neat activity. Um, so, and that's a good point, Nick, uh, probably should have, uh, but, you know, I was running, you know, because those, the ones that I was, that I was running with the mixture, they're different, right? So, you know, technically I should run the exact same mixture as the blank. And so Nick, Nick points out, he says, shouldn't you, you be using the blank is the alcohol mixture for that particular test tube? And he's absolutely correct. I mean, you'll, you'll probably find it won't make a huge difference, but it's good technique and it's and it's and it would be the right thing to do is use the same blank it would be the same solvent um, that you use to create the mixture so what he, what what nick is pointing out in in the chat is you know for the, i i use this one here which was the <clears throat> pardon me the 17 and a half percent so i should have used that as my as my blank and then if i do the red and i say i use this one well that that should be the 4.38 so i should i should blank it each time uh that i do it and you can do that in graphical analysis on the fly so so pardon me, not graphical analysis spectral analysis you can re-blank so you can recalibrate under the gear so if you need to run a second calibration you can do it right on the fly you don't have to start a whole new experiment. Good point, Nick. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, so that's, you know, what do we got? We, we have two ways that you can approach um, intermolecular forces using Vernier stuff. Um, the evaporation of alcohols and, and alkanes experiment, and also using chromatography. And in this case, we're using liquid chromatography using a relatively cheap uh, column uh, we don't sell it, uh, but like I said, you can get it from Waters or you can get it from Flynn. If you have the means, you could also look at um, our GC, and we do have in one of our GC experiments actually is an, a, an IMF experiment. Um, so you can look at intermolecular forces that are involved with the um, GC. Now the GC, the mobile phase in the GC is air. Um, and so, you know, that, and that, that doesn't change. Uh, I believe it's possible to use other gases, but it's rare with our little, little GC that people want to change it. Uh, but it is possible to, you know, to do that with Vernier equipment also. Um, I, I, years ago, I built my own GC out of uh, tubing and tied as my stationary phase. Uh, did want to point out one more thing, and please don't hesitate to throw stuff into the chat like Nick did just a second ago. Um, the, one of the things that we are helping to sell right now is this thing called Pivot. And um, if you are interested with the time we have, unfortunately, there, we won't be able to spend any time with this. Let me put this. You guys have this, by the way. So you have all of this information on that document that is the uh, uh, agenda document. It's in the folder. It's right this one. So you have all this information. You can uh, try this Pivot Interactives, even if you don't have a Pivot account. This won't cost you anything. Um, if you go to pivotinteractives.com and you join a class as if you were a student and paste in this um, class key, 
you can then look at the, there's an, there's a pretty good IMF activity that Peter put into Pivot Interactives. And um, let me, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm just going to show it to you. Um, and it, it's, it's pretty decent. Um, let me, let me go in my library and, and I'll just show it to you from my library because we just don't have enough time right now. Um, let's see. Uh, can't remember what the exact name is. I think intermolecular forces is in the name. Here it is. This is kind of kind of cool the way they did that. Um, let me slide down to where you can change it. So if you watch this video, what's happening is there's pentane between the, the, the mouths of it, if you're familiar with this type of caliper. Um, and so what they're doing is they're, they're moving the caliper. Now that's pentane, it's just gonna have London forces involved. But if you go and change that, well, well in this case, just make it a little bit longer, right? And there's a tool up here in Pivot. Don't forget these little this little toolbar, if you're not familiar with Pivot, it's just a ruler. But the idea here would be that you would you would measure the point at which the the droplet falls apart so you'd let it go whoops and then you can actually you know just inch your way back it's kind of cool the way the the thing tries to hold itself together right so somewhere in there you can measure the 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 opening in the caliper and then change that and then you know you can try other molecules too so in different parts of the activity uh, he's got alkanes but then he's got alcohols down here you have to this activity is written so that students have to finish a component before they move on to the next part um, notice the molecules again i mean very nice and then when you go down here you can compare water and alcohol so here you can change it to the different alcohols similar to what our, our experiment was, but you can also look at water, you know, and other things. So, and, and measure, yeah, the amount of force between the molecules related to um, how the, the, how far you can open the mouth of that. Um, so there's ethanol. And so molecules holding itself together and it just barely, I love the way that Madame Curie just shows up right there in the, in the, in the, in the uh, magnification. That's kind of cool. And so, it's kind of neat. It almost looks like it jumped up there on its own. Isn't that cool? So if you want to try that, it's in that document right there. It doesn't cost you anything because you don't. The only thing is, let me highlight this right here. Do not use a real email. Make up an email, you know, one, two, three, four at uh, three, two, four, one at uh, uh, gmail.com or something like that. Uh, the reason is if you ever want to use Pivot as a teacher and you use your real teacher email here as a student, Pivot will see you as a student and it won't let you activate an account. <laughs> so, uh, so just make up an account, okay? It just has to look like a uh, a real email. It doesn't have to be one. Pivot doesn't collect any information or anything like that. Uh, with your students, we recommend that they use a real email uh, address, partially because they'll eat up your seats with fake ones. And the other is that uh, if they lose their password, they there is a there is a password recovery tool, but it has to be a real email. Otherwise, they'll never get that. Then they're coming to you to get their password reset. We just ran out of time. Uh, but give you a last second here. Does anyone have any questions or concerns um, that you want to throw out there? Elaine, anything that I missed? Nothing that you haven't covered. Um, there isn't anything that people have asked that you haven't already addressed. Okay. All right. Um, what we're going to do here, folks, is I don't know how many folks are in uh, the session, uh, but we are going to hang out until everybody is gone. <laughs> uh, let me stop secure sharing my screen here. Um, and so if you if you would like to um, to hang out and ask a question or two for a few more minutes, you're welcome to do it. Otherwise, we're at the end of the session. Uh, as, you, as you saw, there is a recording of the session. Um, so uh, you will get a, a link to that later on. Um, but if, if there's nothing that, that you need, uh, please have a great day and uh, carry on. Let us know how else we can help you out.